Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and today we're here with episode 301 of Weekly Poker Hand, and today's hand features me. I was somehow invited to play in a 5-5 No Limit game on Poker Night Live with the winners of my favorite TV show, Survivor. So, well, here I am, couldn't turn that down. Um, we're playing somewhere between 500-ish and $1,000 deep, and I get Ace-10 of Hearts and raise it up to $15 under the gun. It's a great hand, definitely a spot that I am happy to play every single time. Folds around to Kim on the button and she calls with Jack 10 offsuit. I would generally recommend if you're playing against someone who plays well, and it's not like I was sitting there playing every single hand or anything like that. Um, if I'm playing reasonably strong ranges from under the gun, I believe we were six handed. You probably just want to be folding stuff like Jack-10 offsuit on the button. If it was suited, you'd definitely play. But offsuit, you're just going to run into too many hands that dominate you or just that have um, you know two high cards or a pair better than yours, right? And like as we see here, it's a good example where I have the Ace-10 of hearts and she's not in very good shape, right? So I would recommend you just fold in that spot or three bet. Three bet would be fine because then what would happen is I will call and then I'll end up check folding a lot of flops. If you've not already, by the way, check out the Poker Night in America uh, YouTube channel. They have loads of great content, including you know full episodes like this one. This is from Poker Night Live, Season 1, Episode 10. Here we are. All right, as we see there, uh, Stapes, Joe Stapleton folded the King-9 offsuit in the small blind, and I think that's a good play, right? Kind of like what I was just suggesting Kim do. He's going to be relatively dominated by me, so he just wants to get out of the way. And if he is going to play that hand, he wants to 3-bet it or fold. And he elected to just fold, which is fine. Then folds around to Boston Rob. He elects to call with Queen 9 offsuit in the big blind for $10 more into a $50 pot. I think that's fine. While he is going to be dominated, he's getting a bit of a discount, right? And he's closing the action. So I'm, I'm fine seeing the flop with the Queen 9. Flop comes. It's coming, I promise. Flop comes Queen Jack 8, one heart. So I have now. A double gut shot straight draw, a king or a nine gives me a straight. I have an overcard, an ace, which is pretty good, and I have backdoor flush draw. Notice here that both my opponents have pretty good hands too. Boston Rob has queen nine for top pair and a gut shot, and Kim has jack ten for middle pair and a gut shot. So we all have something. Let's take a look at how this will play out. It checks to Boston Rob. I'm sorry, Boston Rob's first, and he likes to lead. And I'm not a big fan of leading in this scenario just because it is so easy for me, the pre flop raiser, to have. Pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks. Also, ace queen, king queen, queen jack suited, right? I'm going to have all of those hands in my range, and I'll have 10 nine suited too. So this is a situation where I am going to have the range and the nut advantage across the board, and you don't want to be leading into someone who has the range and the nut advantage. And also, if you think about the hands that Kim's probably going to be calling with on the button, it's going to be connected big card hands or connected middle card hands, right? And this board also nails those pretty hard. So while the queen nine is the best hand, the majority of the time, I think when you lead and get called, you're generally going to be pretty unhappy. Now, funny enough, here he's actually in great shape, as we see as 52% equity, um, which, which is great when it happens. But whenever you bet here and get raised, it's just miserably bad, and you're probably supposed to fold, and you don't really want to be folding the top pair. And um, I think you're just going to be better off checking in this scenario, because there really aren't that many bad turn cards. Only an ace or a king are especially bad, right? So I would have just checked in the spot and then check called. Once he leads into me, now my play depends a lot on what I think about his strategy. And I don't know how Boston Rob plays. I know he plays well. He plays very frequently. We've talked poker a little bit. And um, he plays well, right? He's not just like giving his money away or anything. So knowing that, when he leads, in my mind, he has either some combination of draws, which is a little bit less likely because I have a 10, right? Or he has a made hand somewhere ranging between a very bad made hand, like an eight, or a nut hand, like queen jack, right? So if he has a hand like an eight, raising would be pretty nice because I can raise and then he'll just fold, not win the pot. But if he does happen to have a very good made hand like queen jack and I raise, he's then gonna re-raise and then I'm in a bad spot with my pretty good draw. So in scenarios like this, when I have a draw that is very live, that is also getting good odds to call, it looks like you bet 20 bucks or something like that into the $50 pot, I'm going to continue by calling the majority of the time. Also, I really don't want to uh, raise here because if I raise and Kim calls or re-raises, I could be in very bad shape. 
So this is a spot where calling is very nice. Notice that if I do call as well, Kim's gonna call with a, any one pair type hand. And in this scenario, if I'm against two made hands, you see I have 33% equity, so I'm gonna essentially cash out my equity in this pot because I'm gonna win about a third of the time, right? Whereas if I raise and Rob calls, I'm very clearly gonna be behind his range. And then I'm gonna win more like 40% of the time in a bigger pot. So we'd rather win 33% three ways in a small pot or would you rather win 40% in a big pot? It's not exactly that clean because we do have fold equity, right? Like if I did raise here, I don't know if Rob would have called or folded, but if I did raise here, I'm gonna raise flop, bet turn and jam river. And that's certainly gonna put my opponents in a pretty nasty spot. And we'll probably even fold queen nine by the river a lot of the time. So it's tough to say exactly which play is right here, but I typically call on these spots when I'm getting good odds to draw. So I do call a $20 bet. Kim's probably going to call. I would definitely call here for the same reasons I'm calling. If she raises, the queen's you know, maybe going to fold, probably not. And then the draws that are getting the right price to call are going to call. So really, if Kim raises in this spot, she's essentially forcing me and Rob to play well. Whereas if she calls, she keeps us in with all the worst hands we could have. And you know, she basically has a hand that doesn't necessarily want to play a big pot here. Hey, there's me. All right, turns a queen. And now... This is very good for Rob, clearly. As you see, our equities just went to <laughs> rubbish. Rob now bets out, it looks like $50. It looks like $50, maybe it's 60. So now, what do I do here with the ace 10? So the problem with this is that at this point, I could be drawing very thin. If Rob did happen to lead with the queen jack type hands or queen eight, I am dead, right? If he had 10 nine, I'm drawing to just the king, right? If he happens to have queen nine, as he does, you see I'm drawing to only the ace, which is not so great. If he has uh, king queen, I'm drawing only to the nine, which is not so great. Wait, is that right? Yeah, king queen, I'm drawing to the nine. So as you see, this is a spot where, yes, I still have a double gut shot straight draw, but if you think about the range of hands that Rob would play this way, it's probably, he's probably just not leading here again with a hand like 8-7 or like 8-7 of clubs. It's probably just not happening, right? So if he's not leading with the bad draw or the bad made hands, and if you think about the draws, there really aren't a ton of them because like he could have king 10, right? But I blocked the 10. Also, Kim has something, right? So she could easily be blocking that stuff as well. Um, so so that's, that's not good. Also, if you think about the range that Kim will call with on the button, a lot of that will contain just the queen. Like if she had king queen on this flop or ace queen or queen 10 or queen nine or queen eight or whatever, well, I mean not queen eight, but if she had queen nine or queen 10, she would almost certainly just call the flop bet, which means now facing this bet, if I call, she's very likely to raise. So this is a situation where like if I was heads up, I would definitely continue, but we're not heads up. And it's just, when you're against two players, it's very easy for you to be against someone who just has a much, much stronger hand than yours. And in this spot, it's important to realize that very often, either my outs are somewhat dead because someone blocks them, or my hand's dead because uh, I'm already drawing very thin. And that's the case here. So facing any reasonable bet like $50, I'm just going to fold. Um, if, if he bet like 20, I guess I'd continue by calling. But he does bet 50. I fold. And then, around to Kim, Kim elects to fold too, which I think is probably a little bit snug because now she is closing the action. But at the same time, she could very easily be dead as well, right? And again, think about the range of hands that Boston Rob here is going to be leading the flop and the turn into two people twice, right? That, that's very key here. He didn't lead just once. He led two times using a bet size that is, you know, manageable. It kind of looks like he's trying to get action. So if he's trying to get action, how does Jack 10 fare on Queen, what everyone's board? Queen Jack 8, Queen Jack 8, Queen. Well, if he had a queen, he's going to keep betting. And if he has a queen, you're drawing thin to dead. Turns out she was dead there. If he has a draw, yeah, you're going to fold out. But even then, he has plenty of equity. And if he has a jack that he decided to bet, it's probably going to be a better jack. He's probably not leading jack four. He's probably not even playing jack four, right? So that's the spot where I, I like the fold from Kim as well. Um, other ways this hand could have played out. Rob could have checked the flop. I would have actually checked with my double gut shot on the flop because the board should connect well with my opponent's ranges too. And then Kim probably would have checked, turn would have been a queen, Rob would have bet. I probably would have called at that point because it's less likely that he has specifically a queen whenever the flop checks through. Although I suppose he could have it, right? Um, 
I would have called. Kim would call, probably. River Rob's going to bet. We're going to fold. So there's no way this hand really plays out where we end up playing a big pot unless I bet the flop. And then maybe I find myself in trouble because if I bet the flop on queen, jack, eight, Kim's going to call. Rob's going to call. Turns a queen. If I decided to be a little bit frisky there, it would not work out because I'd be running right into the queen. But I can already tell you, I'm probably going to check the turn because it's so easy there for someone to have a queen. Really, the point of this hand is that when you're playing multi-way and people are putting money in the pot, it is highly likely someone has something. And if it's not you, it's probably someone else. And if someone is voluntarily leading into two people two times, they probably have something and it's wise to get out of the way in those spots. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comments section on YouTube or on Twitter, at Jonathan Little. I'm always happy to help. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Oh, and by the way, if you want to watch the full episode that I played against the Survivor Champions, you can watch that at jonathanlittlepoker.com slash survivor. It was a fun show. It was a, lot of, it was a good time. And, um, well, I'll see if I have any more hands for the next few episodes. I'll talk to you next time.